When we are solving systems of equations, we use the addition method, also known as the elimination method, quite frequently because we don't always have one variable isolated to use the substitution method. Now notice in this problem, both equations have a y and a negative y, which cancel out rather easily if we add the two equations together. So that's what we're going to do, and that's why it's called the addition method. Add the equations together to get 5x is equal to 15, and then we have x is equal to 3. Now, you can't just leave the answer there because, again, our answer is supposed to be a coordinate point with x being 3, and we need the missing y value there. So we're going to take this value of x equals 3 and substitute it into either equation. I think the top equation is the best one to choose because we have a 1y by itself, and we don't want to have that negative in front of the y, which we see in the second equation. So the first equation will become 2 times 3 plus y is equal to 7. And that's 6 plus y equals 7 and therefore y equals 1, and our solution to the system is 3 comma 1. And notice you can always check your solution because this is of the form x comma y and verify that it does indeed work in each of the given equations. On this second problem, we note that we can't just add down and cancel out a uh, coefficient the way we did in the last problem. So now we have to try something different. We could cancel out x's if this was a negative 7x and a positive 7x, and we could cancel out the y's if each of them were 6's, positive 6 and negative 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply that first equation by negative 7, and we're going to have negative 7x plus 21y is equal to positive 98. And I'm going to bring the second equation down here and just rewrite it below all over again so that I can then add the equations together specifically to be able to cancel out those x's. And that will leave us with 23y is equal to 74 and y then is equal to 74 20 thirds. Now when you get an ugly answer like this, the first thing you want to do is just throw your hands up and go, ah! Um, and then you want to go back and double check your work and you'll find that there is no error here. You have have done this correctly. So let me show what you what you can do rather than take this 74 20 thirds and substitute it back in. We can go back to the original problem and eliminate the y's instead. We said earlier that they both go into 6y. So if we multiply that first equation by 2 and the second equation by 3, we will now have 2x minus 6y equals negative 28 and 21x plus 6y is equal to negative 72. And by design we've canceled out those 6x's and we have 23x is equal to negative 100 and therefore x will equal negative 120 thirds. Yuck! Well, that happens to be the right value, and we have negative 100 over 23, comma, 74 over 23 as the point of intersection of those two lines. Now, you can check this in each equation. I'm not going to do that for you. <laughs> um, but you could and verify that this works. Notice, this problem would not be easily solved using the graphing method. You do need an algebraic approach to arrive at such an ugly answer. In this next problem, again, I can't eliminate the variables easily just by adding down. 6 and 5 both go into 30. 2 and 3 both go into 6, and I'd rather keep my numbers smaller. So I'm going to create coefficients of 6d in each equation, and I'm going to do that by multiplying the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2. And that will give us 18c minus 6d is equal to negative 6, and the second equation will become 10c plus 6d is equal to 34. 
and we designed this specifically so that those six D's would cancel each other out, and we're left with 28C equals 28, implying that C is equal to 1. Now we need to go and substitute C in to find a value of D, and I'm going to do it right here, substituting in for C in the second equation. That will give me 5 times 1, which basically is 5, plus 3D equals 17. Well, let's subtract 5 on each side to get 3D is equal to 12, and find out that D is equal to 4. Now when you're dealing with x's and y's, you know that they go in x, y order when you write your solution set. Well here, we keep the alphabetical order 1, 4 as a convention. That is pretty much always what you're going to do. Keep the alphabetical order c, d, just as you would with x, y. And note that this point of intersection between the two lines, 1, 4, can be checked by substituting it into the original equations.